The question is, the motion be agreed to the Leader of the Opposition. Mr Speaker, well, that was Morris Williamson's long list of excuses of why this economy is going down the tubes. You know, Mr Williamson, this country has experienced under this government the worst economic growth since World War II. So more than any other government since World War II, Labour or National, it is by far the worst. And what we see, Mr Williamson, is 53,000 people going every year to Australia because there's no hope in this country. And the figures that came out, sir, the figures that came out just two days ago show that 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 rate is still increasing. Just imagine, Mr Speaker, what our unemployment figures would be if we didn't have the safety valve of the Tasman crossing. Right. 150,000 people have crossed over in the last three years, and if you added that to our uh, unemployment figures today, sir, we would be in triple figures almost in terms of unemployment. Mr Speaker, this government does not offer any real hope for New Zealanders and that's why they're leaving. And as I go around the country, Mr Speaker, and I'm speaking to people, the one thing that I hear from people talking to me, uh, is, and it's a recurring thing, is the lack of confidence they have in this government in education. In education. This is, our education system in New Zealand, Mr Speaker, is one of the best in the world. You look at, you look at the statistics around the, around the globe and we are consistently in the top ten for reading, for numeracy and for science. Yet this government is determined, determined to undermine that. Let's look at the, uh, some of the mishaps we've had, if we wanted to call it that, over the last few weeks. Quality of teachers. Actually, we agree with the government on this. Quality of teachers is really important. And we have very good quality teachers. But you don't raise classroom sizes just to fund the quality of our teachers, to increase the quality of teachers. And the amazing thing about that, Mr Speaker, is that this government still believes that actually raising classroom sizes is a good thing. Is a good thing. The, re the reality of this is that they just felt they didn't sell it well enough. It's not the fact that the, the, the whole proposition is completely wrong, they just didn't sell it enough. They've stripped $60 million out of teacher support and in-service training. They've done that over the last three years. But we've still seen, Mr Speaker, no alternative proposals or any sort of policies put up to, to further their claim that what we need to do is uh, increase the quality of teachers. Instead, what we've got is a series of ad hoc gimmicks around the area of education. And the latest, the latest is charter schools. After we've heard from this government of about the, the quality of teachers, charter schools are going to be allowed to exist without ever getting teachers having qualifications. They don't actually need qualifications to be in charter schools. They don't need to have you trained. It's extraordinary. So you can have now teachers in the Maharishi Yoga School of whatever transcendental meditation setting up, a, setting up some sort of a school, and they don't need to have classroom teachers. They can teach creationism or whatever Mr Banks would love them to teach. Ryan Tumming, they don't have to teach to the curriculum. For God's sake, why do we have a curriculum? But what they can do is they can make a profit. They can take the taxpayers' money and make a profit out of it. Well, isn't that just great? A profit-making charter school that doesn't have to be absolutely accountable to anybody. And that's supposed to raise our, 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 our education standards. Sir, the other day I went along to my, one of my local schools and I was speaking to the principal there. And the principal said to me, um, we, at three, we have the number of children that come along to, to our school that have a English understanding, a comprehension age of a three-year-old is overwhelming. Yet at year six, when they leave that school, they all are up to speed of where they should be. And you know the interesting thing about that? 
The other interesting thing about that school, if you, if you measured that school at year four, it would be a failure under national standards. This is a school that is taking kids and giving them eight, taking them eight years in the space of six, and yet it's going to be branded as a failure. Those kids are going to be branded as failures. The teachers are going to be branded as failures, and yet it's a fantastic school in my electorate. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Todd McClay. <laughs> Mr.